Here, I'll take this one. Oh, okay, thanks. Move over a little. That's good. Much obliged. Uncharted Lost Legacy is a side game when you play as Chloe Fraser, the first ever Uncharted game based on a different character, and the last one Naughty Dog had made, so far, because they love to remaster games, instead of writing and programming new ones, now let's begin. At the start of the game, we are buying items, and this little girl is named Minu, voiced by Tierra Rorals, and she gets interested by this golden piece that represents the god Ganesh. It's an important item, just not right now, and when leaving, we take a photo of Minu in the city. It's Chloe's new feature to take photos around the game. It's also good for checking the little details of the game. The more fights you get into, the more blood will be on her hand. Nice little details there Naughty Dog. Also she tries to pickpocket Chloe, but fails. Now remember how in my Uncharted 3 review, I mentioned how you could barely see what item you're picking up. Well it's just a shining light this time. So we get close and before sneaking in, we promised me new pizza. Remember that later, but we sneak into one of the vehicles. And off we went. When getting here we're in this dark alleyway. And before we carry on, let me show you how photo mode works here. Here's a nice photo. Let's do it here. You could zoom in and out. Focus the blurry background. Angle the sun lighting. Change the background filters. Sort of frame brightness and a few more i'm not 100 percent what changes but my favorite is facial expressions of all photo modes this is easily my favorite feature you could take the most serious character and give them the funniest expressions my favorite being kratos with the cutscene in god of war which you could also do with Artreus. so we have a photo to go to this door so we make it there and we have to pick locks. With this, I suggest to spin it around. Until you feel some shaking, move it back and keep it still. We head in. Now, head up the roof. After we get interrupted. And here's where we fight as Chloe. And I like how the combat is different. Chloe uses her legs more for attacking. And jumps on full body on her enemies. I hope that doesn't sound wrong. So we get to figure out who was telling us to meet at the roof. Nadine Rock. Nadine Ross. She is the one you're working with. Since she's all alone. Because her men left her. And she came for a paycheck. So we get to the next chapter. So Chloe takes a photo of the boss. Who is a Sav. Played by Usman Ally. He isn't exactly the most iconic villain in the series. But he isn't bad. Although he reminds me of Senator Armstrong. Just not so American. And you'll see what I mean when you see him in chapter 5. Trust me. So we make it into his collection room, and we get to a balcony, trying to pick the lock. Oh, I'm getting deja vu from this. Gonna get that door open anytime soon? Working on it. Seeing as I'm the only one who knows how to pick locks, I suggest- <laughs> When it shows that he was searching for what we want to, a tusk called the Tusk of Ganesh. Now this game does go heavy on the Hindu pantheon. I do remember Chloe mentioning Buddhism in Uncharted 2. What, like a Buddhist holy grail? So I believe they wanted Chloe to follow all sorts of beliefs and mythology stories, as Nate knows history stories or tales. So, she's basically the female version of the mythology guy. So we look around until he finds us, but not before taking this disc. The disc acts like a key for the trails to come. So we escape, barely, and take a boat ride to a island. But this disc represents three of the Hindu gods, the first one being Ganesh, the one we seek the tusk of, and the weapon, is a trident. Parashuramus is the one with the bow and arrow, then Shiva, the one with the axe. Now, on the disc, they show the symbols on the disc, and we have to find the temple, but before we continue... DAMN BOY! She... <laughs> And into chapter 3. In this chapter, we learn that she could use the rope. So Sam must have told her about the rope. Since Nate never used it in Uncharted 2 or 3. And the last time they truly talked was at 3. Or, the wedding. So it's a chapter getting in the city. And nothing really much to say. But this chapter, is the longest in the whole Uncharted series yet. But before talking about that, we did this to Nadine. Oh, oh. Refreshing. <sighs> Could've warned me! Oh, where's the fun in that? Forking hilarious. Hot diggity dog! This place is magnificent! 
An embarrassment of riches, as they say. So this is the map of chapter 4. You're only allowed to use it in this chapter. Let's start with the tower. You must climb up it to find all the locations of the different god temples. But I kinda searched for a bit of time looking for them. Since I know where to go. And, well, I kinda didn't know where to go at the start to climb the tower. So it shows the location on the map when you do. Or just run around. Somewhere that looks like a good place to place them. Now first, I suggest going to this location. Reason why is so you can start a short side story. When you have to find these animal tokens. It's optional so you don't need to do it. But it does kinda gives me. Donkey Kong Country Returns vibes. With a. A. Crystal coconut. So they are scattered around the island. Some of them are puzzles. Some of the savs men are covering. And some. You need to think outside the box. So let's talk about some of them. For the first example. We needed to turn a tab on. And press the button on top of them. I think. I almost did first time. So start from here. And use the rope well. Actually I think they use the rope mechanic more effectively in this game. Let's bring it to the next one. You have to find the start. And constantly jump from one to another. So here's the example. Of what I meant by a savs men covering them. They're waiting around. And you have to use the lock pick to get a box to open it. I tried to see if I could do it. When they're still around. And. I was successful. Somehow. Here's one when you need to think outside the box. Just dive underwater. And then find your or find a secret location. Here's one when you needed to ring a few bells when a countdown. Well. Counts down. We have ones when you need to use grenades. To open a door. After you do one job. Use your body weight to open a secret door to find an item. The final example I'll tell you is this one. You have to rotate this thing around. So all the pieces are inside. Chloe even references Sully. As a wise old man once said, Abra goddamn cadabra. Even when he isn't in the game. He still gets the crown. After all of that, come back to that secret area, and then you'll all get this little thing. Ruby, 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 Ruby. This little thing tells you where treasure is nearby. Here's an example of it working. So it'll give you a glow and a little sound. So you can turn it on or off whenever. Okay, let's, let's get, get back, back to, to the point. point. You must go to the three temples, each representing the three gods Ganesh, Parashuramas, and Shiva. Now I did Shiva's first so let's start with the, the god of destruction. In this one, you must jump at the right spots to not get hit by the axes. It's usually three times until they attack. The first step to returns to its stance, one to get ready the attack, then the last to swing. It'll show you on the floor where it'll strike. Gotta do that three times. But they are different ones. Like this one that when you jump. It'll rotate 90 degrees. To attack. It'll always attack. But after that rotate the axe. And parts of a door will open. The next one I did was parachute on us. In this one and Ganesha Sav's men are searching the area. But in this one. I went full solid snake mode. And snuck through all of these guys. And killed them. Without alerting them. But in all seriousness. We did some climbing. And same goes with this rotating thing. But on the other side. Ganesha's temple. We have to push these buttons and rotate again. Once that's done. Head to the gate. Be before that. Here's a little detail you can do to get a trophy. Climb up this tower. All the way to the top. And wait a bit. Then Chloe will say things. And start doing yoga. So we head to the gate. And into the next chapter. In this chapter. We climb some statues. And travel around a bit. Now. I'd be honest. At first. I thought they were gonna make these two a thing. I said. In the second game. Why make Nate and Chloe a thing? If Nate is gonna end up with Elena at the end. But, I made a mistake. Since it was to show, how Chloe is the type of girl, who would date any man to get anything. At the time, glad they didn't. But I wanted to point my mistake out. Rookie mistake. So we head in and face this puzzle. This puzzle you have to move the statues in the right place, to complete it. And it's a complicated one. But I really like it, so a light will shine. And what you need to do, is to push it to both the right side. And after that we put the disc in this hole, and rise up. So much for that, and we climb out. It kinda reminds me of that burning house, in Uncharted 3. But when we got up, 
a load of water came through. Speaking of water, remember this scene. Chloe remembers that moment. Fraser, come on. Don't have time to play Marco Polo. <laughs> what? Nothing. I think that's a really cool detail. So as we make our way, we... Oh no! Not you again! Run from this again, and escape it, as we both went through a door. Making our way out we then, oh boy, here comes the naughty dog version of Armstrong. So we fight him, and it's kinda like, the first time they fought Nadine. It's just that, this time, it's happening to her. Suck on that! So we go through a wall, and slide down Stellar Blade style, and get knocked out, before we carry on. Honestly, I thought a Sav was a super soldier, because it looked like Chloe and Nadine did nothing to him. It almost like if he was- But he is just a normal human being. So we get out, now. The water that came sliding down, opened a way to where the tusk was kept, and find they have someone to solve the puzzles, that person being- Sam! And when Nadine figures out, we brought her to get the tusk, and to save Sam. Well, let's say. She forgave and wait what is she- Okay so leaves us and into chapter 6. In this chapter, we have no car, and we gotta walk to this area. But I should point out, we can get C4s. You could only use grenades or C4s, with them. Place them on the floor, or walls, then press the detonate button, which is down. So we face a gun car, and after defeating it, we meet with Nadine and she forgives us practically instantly. I'm sorry she just forgave us. So let me talk about the elephant in the room. Why have the argument, if she gonna forgive us, like, 10 minutes later, well we save this baby elephant, and we even had a ride on it, so they talk for a bit, Chloe even talks about her father, the reason she goes on adventures like these, explaining how her father was a explorer himself, and with that golden piece of Ganesh, is the last memory of him to her, and after getting off, we could get a photo, Nadine taking it for us, then into the temple in the next chapter. In the beginning of this chapter, we begin with a ordinary fight, with a load of guns, we head in, and remember that golden piece of Ganesh, was a sort of key, for the tusk, so carrying on with the adventure, we find a way on that waterfall, by taking the hard way round, oh yeah, this happened. So entering the temple we see Shiva, and we had to move her arms. Kinda reminds me of that puzzle from Uncharted 2. So we move the trident, and the drum she was holding. Why you may ask, so we can fill the this, a uh, bowl, with water and Shiva's third eye opens with light, then we needed to line up the statues, to open up an entrance. But before we could get down we get attacked, and sadly they were too many. Then when we get down a Sav was there, with Sam. Sam. Those two have a bit of an argument, on the way to the tusk, so a Sav couldn't figure the puzzle ahead, and uses both Nadine and Sam, as tools to make Chloe get the tusk for him. So after solving some puzzles, and moving the Ganesh statue we then, I'm sorry what the fork is going on, why did the camera stick to one side of the clip? Honestly replayed the game for this review it just got stuck. The idea was the axe will strike, and you surrendered with your hands up, to show how Ganesh did the same. So we get tied up to be drowned, so we lock pick the locks and, I'm sorry but it's broken again. Am I gonna be stuck like this forever now? So we free Nadine first, then get on to freeing Sam, and Nadine saved Sam. So we get out and the camera is fixed so no more problems. Probably, we get out, and we have a new party member on our team, and we get ready. We take a car to the next location, where a Sav is gonna sell the tusk, and into chapter 8. In this chapter we practically do all the heavy lifting, as Sam is just watching us, because, um, he's holding the lighter. I'm holding the lighter. So we make it to the base, where we meet Orca, who is voiced by Gideon Emery, Nadine's old lieutenant, and Orca has the tusk. So all you need to do is get inside and open up some boxes. They should have rocket launchers. If I were you, sneak as much as you can, then fire at the helicopter. Just good luck shooting, so it gets weak enough, and you have to rope it. Then get up in the helicopter and fight Orca. The helicopter goes down, and Orca traded a sav for a bomb. To start a war, in this scene, Sam saved Nadine from a gun. 
But I'd be honest, Nadine probably could have fired faster than Orca pulling out the gun and then firing. So Chloe wants to save the day. Nadine is still the jerk she usually is and say no. So we head out to stop them. But at least Sam helped us. Okay, but Nadine did come to her senses and helped us out. In chapter 9, we had to catch the damn train. And it's a lot like the Uncharted 2 train. But this time you could rope and get on other vehicles. So Sam drives off and we get on. Just making our way through, we got to the bottom, but it was strapped in good. So the question is, what could we do? Up ahead, was two ways, so we had to get with Sam, and change the tracks. And we switched the tracks, so the bomb wasn't gonna explode the city. So I guess I should talk about Asav and his plans. He wanted to blow up the city, because he wants his people to rise again. My people shall rise again. Yeah, to me out of all the uncharted villains. I'd say Asav kinda sucks, when it comes to motivations, but he does good at Armstronging. So we crash into a train, fight him one last time, he does Nano Machine Sun, and Chloe and Nadine beat him. Ultra combo! And we had to go, with the bomb strapped on the train, so we run and escape, then. Ah! No, it was a dud. I can't believe- <laughs> Shit, that's gonna be a hell of a story to tell when we pass in the blunt. Happy ending all, and remember that young girl Minu. We have a nice time of pizza time. And that's that. I can say out of all Uncharted stories, it was the weakest, but the new ideas and concepts was good. This was meant to be a smaller story with Chloe, and, even if I miss Nate, I'd prefer they not go back to him, only because he could have his happily ever after. But I did like the differences between Nate and Chloe, like how their combat style is different. Now for what the game was supposed to be, a mini story, with an old and quite recent character, as the main characters, I'll give it a... Uh, seven? Uh, six to seven. Now, onto the last of us. I want to finish this before something has begun. Oh, I'm brave, <laughs> yep. but I'm careful.